guys, welcome to my channel. We are online with Max. Hey. Hi, Matt. Hi, everyone. So we ready game two of the UB tournament CR9 organized by Kazas. As you saw on my channel, my game one was uh, really a nightmare for me. Uh, it's uh, it's getting uh, yeah it's it's always the same more or less since I, I participated to this tournament from Kazas three times and three times in a row where I started really badly. But this happens. We still have two games to play, and we have also Max who played a, a first game. He, you were able to win and. I will put the link in the description, maybe, then you will able to say a couple of words, but I will put the link in the description because you've made uh, a kind of a small battle report with learning, screenshots, things like that on the Ninth Age forum. So I will put this link under the video and then you will be able to check the first game of Max. Maybe in two, three words, what, what happened in your first game? You, you were yeah. playing against uh, Kingdom of Equitain, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, in, in two words, I was able to, to start, so I deploy everything to, to be able to get the first turn and my opponent uh, deployed pretty uh, defensively, so not on the line from the 18 inches apart, but really on on his um, on the defensive side. And uh, uh, thanks to that, he was able to, well, to, to mitigate the opportunity for me to rush with, uh, with turn one. So I wasn't really able to, to rush him. Um, made a few mistakes, I think, that didn't allow me to, to get a big, a, re a big win. And then, yeah, it was it was kind of hard to really push into his line because he got so so long uh, charge range that you cannot just push in the middle of the board without uh, being uh, being aware of his uh, of his threats. So yeah, it was quite a defensive game from him, but a well played game, and that make it that uh, I wasn't able to really win big. I just win by by this um, secondary objective. So it was a small win, but yeah, it's still a win. So still happy with that. Yeah, interesting game. So check out this this blog. You will be able to see the explanation from Max in English and all all stuff related to these games and preparation and also all the battle reports. So it might be interesting for you if you are looking for yeah strategic analysis and stuff like that, similar to what I do on this channel actually. Um, let's move on to this, our second game. So we are playing secure target. Uh, with frontline clash on the map number one, maybe two to three words on the map. We have uh, an impassable on the middle of the board, which split the the table more or less in two equal parts. The left part is slightly bigger. We have a ruin, a field, a forest, and then on the right side, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty packed with a hill that allows you to charge really far away. And on the opposite side, you have a wall that you can use, and also something to maybe yeah, uh, make it difficult to go for the wall is the the lake that uh, will cause obviously for the infantry unit some DTs and maybe some break of the steadfast. So interested, interesting map, and obviously. If you want to, to put the first marker on the right part of the board, you could make sure, basically, if you take the bottom part, you can use the wall, put your marker on the right, and then make sure that your opponent has more, more or less the only choice to put it on the other part of the map, and therefore to split a little bit the, ba the battle around this impossible. And as we know, not every army are able to play around an impassable, um, so that might be a, an important parameter. But you could obviously also, if if you don't put it that well, if you put it too close to the impassable, that could also give the opportunity for the opponent to put it, for example, slightly near your, de your deployment zone and then to, to try to play on one half of the board. So yeah, interesting configuration that we can play with Secure Target. Uh, Max, we'll start with your game. Can you tell us a yeah. little bit how you feel? Uh, here are the lists, so maybe you can explain us a little bit what, what are the lists and mm -hmm. maybe your macro consideration first, then we'll move on again to the map. Yeah, sure. So, well, my list is the same as, as before, so you kind of know it now, I guess. Um, for my opponent list, so it's Undying Dynasty with a, a strong magic setup with a, a Master Evocation and then... Um, with Sacred Hourglass, so he can reroll um, when he casts with two dice uh, magic spells. And then uh, he got uh, Adept Divination and Adept Cosmology, so pretty much uh, eight spells to, to deal with me. It's kind of nice. Uh, Tomb Architect to give the, the regeneration boost. And then you have basically three fighter units. So you have um, four Tomb Reapers, six Chapties, and six Tomb Cataphracts. 
So that's three big units that uh, more or less it's it's more than 500 points each. So you can expect big, um, big uh, close combat with this with these guys. And then he got some some chaff with uh, three times five skeleton scouts, and then uh, the ten skeleton cavalry for the for all the characters that are mounted on skeletal horse. So that that will be his bunker. And then um, he got a small scoring unit that is with banner of the entomb. So they got this special ambush. And then uh, three skeleton chariots for also another uh, light uh, scoring unit from his part. So it's pretty pretty forward actually. He got he got shaft. He got three fighting units, and then he got one two uh, small scoring units. So. Um, what I expect from him is a lot of boost and uh, debuff combat spell. So I expect that when we get into combat, it will be really hard to to fight against this uh, these three units because they probably will always have one or two boost on them. So you can expect roll to hit, roll to wound, or, or stuff like that. So not not easy to to find such units. Um, and uh, I expect from him that he will prefer to to play compact. So if we look at at the map, um, what what I expect from him is that he will prefer to to have all the units on one side of the impassable. So preferably, I guess, on the on the left part, if he takes the bottom. So if I if I'm able to choose, I guess I will take the the top part because of the hill uh, that gives nice advantage on the on the right part of the map. And I expect him to then to to choose. Uh, a big uh, left uh, heavy um, deployment, but then it also depends on the on the objective where where we can place it. Um, but as I said, I think he will prefer to be on the left part of the board, and then all the units on the left. Um, the tomb reapers can really be be useful around the impassable because uh, because of the fly movement. So obviously, it's it's a good spot for them to be uh, around this impassable to to threat my, my units while not being really threatened because of the impossible. So, um, well, the, the, I don't have a, really a, a clear idea in my mind about what will go on. I think I have to, to take advantage of the, the units that I have. I have more threats than him. My units are maybe uh, less threatening because uh, I have, I have uh, less boosts than he can have and um, also because I I don't have so so um, such strong units as he have, but I think with combo charting and trying to, to take advantage from my high mobility, that can be uh, something useful. We have more or less the same number of chaffs, so that will really be about who can use his chaff the, the best way. Uh, uh, he has a clear advantage because of the, the flying uh, Tomb Reapers, so my chaff will be at least uh, useless against one, one of his big three threats. So um, uh, more micro approach. I think uh, what I what I see is that the the beast lord can be really useful against the the six tom Uh This unit is really painful because he he gets so many attacks basically mm -hmm. with poison or with lethal strike, and then yeah you get you get nine attacks from the snakes, then you get uh, like twelve attacks from the from the guy on the top. So it's really hard to to play against this unit. But the beast lord with with um, eye of dominance, so the snakes only hit on six, which makes it harder for him. And then it's only AP two, so he got a four up and then a five Aegis. I think yeah, the, um, the beast lord is quite quite good against this unit. So one possibility will be to, if I get the opportunity, charge with the beast lord and then prepare some counter charge on the flank on the rear, and yeah, whatsoever. So really, it's about I think getting combo charges, and uh, also use my ambush. Um, Maybe to to threat the the mage bunker, but yeah, that that will be kind kind of hard because he got some so much mobility with his cavalry that yeah, definitely you cannot expect the the ambushers to to really threaten him. Maybe just I think the, the ambusher you need to try to target uh, an additional charge because this kind of combat might yeah if you might need time to to kill all yeah. these models with a lot of health point. I mean. In my opinion, you have some similar strengths in your list. You have relatively big block of Minotaurs with a lot of attacks. He has the same with his big unit, so mm -hmm. it might be, for you, the key might be to be able to support quickly enough with an additional threat. And then yeah. if you come with either a character or an ambush, it might be the key for victory, in my opinion. 
Yeah, and then just just use the, the binding scroll at the at the right yeah, moment definitely. because he got so many boosts that I will have just to see what what do I target? Do I target to to avoid getting a reroll two hit or? Well, he got two parts. He got basically boost for the two hit rolls and some boost and, and debuff for the two wound rolls. And I think I really have to focus on one of these two because he got so many spells that it's not yeah. possible to, to dispel both. But for example, if, if I can get stone skin on my unit, then I will really try to avoid having reroll to wound or minus one resilience on my unit and then really try to, to get be- the, the most benefit I can from my spells and make his spells at, at least uh, the, the least useful possible. Mm-hmm. Are, are you scared of the possibility for him to snipe your character? Uh, for example, no. I don't know if the, the Master yeah. Druidism will try to play a little bit more in the back, maybe yeah. in the early stages. I don't know what's your approach regarding that. Um, I think, yeah, I don't need to be really close to my units with a Master Druidism because on the right part, I got everything I need. Mm-hmm. I got a lake, I got a heal, so I'm really nice on the on this part. So, um, what what I really need is more to support the other flank. If we spill, uh, if we we play the the wide, the wide uh, on the whole table, then I really need him on the on the right on the left part. Sorry, because on the right part I got enough yep. with a heal, with a lake and everything. So I don't. Yeah, if he takes if he takes this evocation spell, I'll just try to to make it hard for him to come close to to my soothsayer and for the both other characters. I got enough tool to with Aegis, mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. Uh, regeneration. So uh, yeah, sure. And you have Druidist, so you can heal your character exactly. if you need to. Yeah, and on, also, on I mean, the, threads, yeah. maybe the scal- uh, the ambush can be useful also to make sure that the mage bunker will not be too close to your mage as well. I mean, by yeah. entering at some part some part of the board with your ambush, maybe you can just make sure that he has to move away with the mage and then not be able to target you anymore. Maybe and that's that's why he just have a, a threat range. That yeah. yeah, basically I can maybe also play it that uh, the ambush uh, make it hard for him to be in range for boost. But it's it's still 24 inches boost that he got, uh, yeah. so it will be hard to really annoying annoy him with that. But we'll we'll try. Yeah, as an interesting list, I think he definitely choose something where you de shine for me because yeah. a lot of health point, so you can really play on the the rays and a lot of boost as well. So I think it's an interesting list. Uh, not mm-hmm. a lot of models on the board, but definitely some hard hitting unit, and I'm definitely impressed by the Tom Reaper. I guess this unit will be a pain for you to handle. Yeah. Definitely, I think it's that's the worst unit. Uh, it's it's so. a nightmare for every. I don't know exactly how you can deal with them effectively because they are just a nightmare. Yeah, I will the, tell you. The, if the I strike find well. Yeah, you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's no. it's always the same. If you don't think that you have the perfect tool to deal with them, I guess the best way to to do that, and I think that's valid also against very strong character where you where you don't have really a close combat answer. It's just to to give him choice. If you if you threaten him at different places and he don't know exactly where to go with Tom Reaper, then basically there are choices to make and he might do mistakes and not go in the right direction, mm-hmm. right zone, and then maybe you can win some time and push otherwise. So I think it's just about yeah giving him hard choice to make and then he might do mistakes with them. Yeah. Sure. So that might be also maybe an aspect why you would like to play on the whole table because if it's if it's packed in a corner, I mean, yeah, it will be easy for him to protect the other unit. But then if he needs to play more wide, it's maybe better for you. Yeah, the, I guess. the only thing I need to, to be careful of is also that all the, uh, the fight units cause fear. Yeah. And because uh, surprisingly enough, none of my units cause fear. I need to be careful. Um, for example, oh, yeah. with a beast lord, because you got leadership eight, you're rival, You never know what can happen with him. So yeah, I will have to play a little bit risky with him, but yeah, I have to be careful about that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then good luck for your game. Thanks. Uh, let's move on to mine. So I'm playing against Ursa O Six. I guess that's his uh, nickname. He's playing Demon Legion, so we both got crushed on the first game, obviously. I got only one point. Uh, him, I guess, he got a similar score to mine, obviously. So he's playing a very, st- for me, strange list with double Sentinel. Never faced that before. 
uh, two block in core so I guess he will be putting uh, one sentinel in each of the block I expect the guiding mirror scale to be in the lemurs because basically they don't mm. have a great damage damage output so I could play with that special rule to just force me to strike at myself and then the other one will be in the mirrodons to just yeah, it, it gives better zoning uh, effect for this unit because basically I have minus two on the charge. So um, he has movement five, swift ride, so he could be able to charge a bit more. Um, then he has uh, several flying threats, two times threshing engine, the small one, one time the blazing glory with the impact, and then two times the blow fly. So a lot of flying threats, uh, one piece of chaff, the furies, and one unit of brazen beast. I guess what's positive for me, obviously, is the fact that the blood flies don't have any option, especially the Aligning Jaw are really a nightmare for me because I have a lot of large and gigantic models. So I was really, um, yeah, I, I liked a lot that he didn't pay for this option, especially it's, it's pretty cheap and I guess it would have been much, much stronger in this matchup. Uh, I've put some, some description of what which unit does what, that was a little bit the homework. And here you saw as well what is my idea to counter a little bit his threats. Uh, I guess basically the the fact that the three anointed Kadim Titan and the Bull in a one-on-one -on -one fight, especially in a, if I get the charge, I should be fine against Brazen Beast and Flies. So I guess that's that's what I will try to to do to threaten them in a one-on-one -on -one fight and to get the charge. Obviously, the fact that he has only one chaff should help me to get some charges and then the two blocks um obviously i will try to to make sure that he cannot be in combat with balls because it might be difficult to face both uh, i guess especially the lemurs might be really difficult to fight for me because of the toughness five the ward save and the mirror so i will try if i can since they are also a bit slow the lemurs if I can put them in a zone and force him to make choice and don't catch anything in my army, that would be my best option. And then try to go with the six anointed against the Myrmidon. Especially I can I can shoot a little bit at the Myrmidon with the both Titan Mortar before going to combat. So I think I have some good tools to diminish them a little bit before combat and then try to go in combat. So obviously has a little bit more threats than me. So I will need to use magic and stuff like that to reduce a little bit his amount of threats. And then deal with them soon enough to then make sure that I can go around and try to get some combo charges. And I did two simulations on UB. Uh, the first one is where I choose the side. So basically I would choose the bottom part of the board. I like the fact that I can uh, basically put a big block behind the wall and put my second target in the front. Because basically that would be really, really difficult to just uh, remove uh, this uh, such scoring unit from, from the target. I expect him to put the second target as close as possible for mine, so on the other part of the of the, the impassable train, and then basically his two main block would be in the front of each target. That would be my assumption, and then around that, for me, he would just uh, yeah put a bit a little bit around, so some blood flies maybe around the impassable, some flying unit obviously to play to be able to fly over the impassable, and then maybe on the side some brazen beasts that can also play on this objective. My strategy would be uh, here on the far left, you don't see it because of the camera, but I have put the Great Bull, Kadim Titan and one scoring unit. So basically my strategy would be to put a lot of forces on the right part of the board, to put the Anointed, both Titan Mortar, uh, the big block of uh, Infernal and then in the back my BSB. I need to be careful because of the evocation mage, so I would be as far away as possible. And obviously I will try to give a um, hard choice to make for the Lemuse unit, because Basically what he can do is just move on the target and protect it, but then he will do nothing during the whole game And I can always go around and threaten blazing glory flies with my uh, caster and Cadim titan um, And then at the same time I have a scoring on the left scoring on the right So he will need to make choice to try to kill me because if not I can always try to go around do some tricks and just uh, make sure that he doesn't get a free or free secure target and then on the right part of the board I think I'm feeling pretty confident with the six anointed 
they can basically uh, kill kill easily the brazen beast i guess and also try to target with titan mortar the the myrmidon like i've told you so i think i have some good options um if i if i play like that obviously i need to try to avoid one of the blocks and i think the the lemurs will be really the block that i will try to avoid so if he puts them on the right maybe i do something slightly different and i go more for the center because basically for the lemurs to go around the impossible from one side of the board to the other it's nearly impossible so i guess if i can avoid one of the big blocks that would be really cool for me um yeah what else can i tell you i guess that's it in in this game the great bull of shamut and kadim titan are really really strong so i could also put one on the other flank i have some option but I liked in, in this approach the evocation mage is in the Mirbedon and I like the fact that my Great Bull is as far away as possible from him because basically I don't want to, to lose some health point early on and then I can just push the flank and especially the Blazing Glory can be annoying so to have the damage missile uh, to, to face him is really cool because then I can just get a couple of health point and then the Kadim Titan is not scared anymore, for example. So I think the Great Bull with Divine Attacks and all the stuff is feeling really confident in this game. And I should be able with him to, to do a great game. Just want to avoid a little bit to get some early damage with Evocation. And like I've told you, I need to be careful with Lamasu and the BSB uh, not to get too close from Evocation, but still be able to give some reroll. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty scared from the Magic Face. I think that's the main threat for me. Uh, I have some hard choice that I can give him, but I'm really scared of the magic because if he is able to get some Wrath of God and then Snipes, uh, all of that together might be really hard to handle. So it will be, yeah, depending also on the magic, how it goes and how I'm able also to diminish the Mimedon with my shooting attack. So we'll see. I'm pretty curious to see. And then my second simulation. Um, if he choose the side, if he takes the bottom and plays a similar strategy by basically uh, putting the lemur behind the wall, that would be <laughs> impossible for me to get to get them because I mean parry toughness five distracting, that's really impossible. Um, I would take a similar approach this time by putting my second target quite far away, but still be able to put a lot of unit on the left part. So yeah, I also like this simulation because here basically I would be able to play with the Great Bull of Shamut to threaten his unit, especially here the Blazing Glory, but still profit from the heal to be protected from some of the range damage. Um, and at the same time still having some, as you see, it's a similar strategy because I would still have two scoring units and either it goes for the wall or it push forward to the left but then i can still have a scoring here and protected by the great bull or it goes more for the right but then yeah it's away from the action and can i can still move around with them so i i like the the, the option that i have here and still the bsb in the back to provide reroll where i need to titan mortar facing the myrmidon and here in this case i put the Kalim titan uh, on the far left basically to deal with the brazen beast um, maybe the chaff is not in the best position in this screenshot should put it further to the left to chaff the brazen beast i think that should be really the target number one for the chaff is the brazen beast because basically that's the only one that i can that can charge far away and are not flying so i think that will be the target for my chaff so i would put maybe the chaff here on the left to try to chaff them and then be able to push with the canyon titan since he has only one piece of chaff um i think i should be able to play and then move forward with the save try to chaff to to bait a little bit the mimedon and force him to make some bad mistakes i like here the fact that on each part of the mimedon i have a big block so i'm threatening if he goes more right then i have them if I, he goes more to the left i can threaten the flank with the six anointed so i like i like a lot here my my options so yeah that would be uh, my my assumption in this game we'll see if it if it's uh, like I, I thought or if it does something completely different i don't know exactly how i think in the fact that we are pretty low on the the table will yeah it, it will be i think an open game and since he has not a lot of scoring unit i expect him to put each of his block in the front of one token but maybe we'll do something more 
more conservative and not really go, not really commit uh, one block on each, but maybe put both of them together to be more compact. We will see. I, as as you saw, I don't really like to go for the Lemur because I think it's a hard block to face for me, um, even for the anointed. I guess with parry, I'm not sure I will be eating well. And then with the mirror, I will be causing to myself some strength 6 attacks. So I don't like that at all. So yeah, that's a little bit what I expect. Max, do you have any comments on my simulation? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, I was going to say what what you just said. Uh, basically, that he has okay. not a lot of scoring units, just three. And that, yeah, you still have the possibility for him to play really on one side. And maybe just... Just let the the brazen beast on the other side to to just be in range of the the scoring and then play really compact on the for example here on the left side with both both big blocks. So that could be a possibility too, I guess. Um, what I'm wondering is maybe the um, the Kaidim Titan can take the the Lemurs on because basically we will, you will just strike at the um, at the um, Sentinel first, kill him, and then then you get just stomp on lemurs for, for yeah. every round so that could yeah, be a, definitely. a counter it's, i guess it's a good idea i guess what i need to do first is to clean some of the additional threats before to yeah. go for the block but that, that's that's right i guess the fact that i have these 2d3 automatic hits could be interesting because against them i mean it's uh yeah the, the parry doesn't do anything yeah, against exactly. the, the strength of the Kalim Titan. So, yeah, maybe, why not? That's a good idea. But I, I guess, yeah, my first priority is to clean Blazing Glory, deal with the uh, the, the Blazing Beast and the Flies, and then, then only then, I guess, I can try to get... I can try to get maybe a, a very nice combo charge. Also, the Great Bull is really good against the mm -hmm. Lemurs because of the, uh, div uh, the div divine attack with the breast weapon, divine stomp. So I guess I could do I could deal with them, but not before I dealt with other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm asking myself and is if he if he goes compact with both block, I don't know if I can really be in front of him. That might be too much. I guess. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure. I mean, well, the that is could you, be you interesting. To, yeah, and you have to be green. And I mean, if mm. he's compact, you have the threats of heady, having Cadim Titan and the the bull on the same side. Yeah, and that's just big threats. That if you can engage both of them into one unit, it's just the the unit is dead. Yeah. So yeah, it could not? be interesting. I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's it's depending a lot on the approach he chooses. But like like you said, I guess due to the the bad result that we we got until then i think i i have to go for it if he if yeah. he goes with a compact line i have to face him and see what happens it will be uh definitely interesting mm -hmm. and um yeah like like you told also the fact that he has only one shaft could help me to get some good charges so I'm, I'm interested. Definitely, I will not drop everything for first turn. I will just yeah. put some unit and see what he does and then just adapt and be sure that I, I am at, at the right spot with the important unit. Yeah, I think that's the best way to, to deal with that. Just see how he deploys, uh, what's his mind, and then counter deploy him. Okay, good guys. I guess that's all. Thanks a lot, Max, for the analysis. So, uh, like we did for for this game, uh, Max will be writing again on, on his blog uh, a summary on his blog. Sorry, a summary of of his game, and I will be doing again a battle report, obviously. So, Max, good luck for your game. Thanks, and, you too. Uh, yeah, you guys, too. talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye.